Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Praise be to the name of the Holy One of Israel. Glory, 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 hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. Thank you, Lord, for making me whole. Thank you, Lord, for giving to me that great I want you to write this in the so comment cool, section. So free. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Who is like unto our God? Who is like unto our God? Great and faithful is the Holy One of Israel. The Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth is his name. Great are you, Lord. Great are you, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah to the King of kings and Lord of lords. How excellent is the name of our God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. <coughs> hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Thank you, Lord. You are awesome in this place, Almighty God. You are worthy of all praise. To you, our lives we raise. You are awesome in this place, Almighty God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. As I come on this morning, I'm sharing. I am sharing. I am sharing because I want others to have the benefit of this ministry of the gospel of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. So I am sharing, I am sharing, hallelujah, hallelujah, glory be to the name of the Holy One of Israel. Great is the faithfulness of our God. How great is our God, how great is his name, he is the greatest one, forever the same. He rolls back the waters from the mighty Red Sea, he says I'll lead you. Won't you trust in me? How great is our God? How great is his name? He's the greatest one. Forever the same. He rolls back the waters from the mighty Red Sea. He says, I'll lead you. Won't you trust in me? How great is our God? How great is his name, he's the greatest one, forever the same. He rolled back the water from the mighty Red Sea, he says I'll lead you, won't you trust in me? Good morning Holy Spirit of God and welcome, welcome into our presence, welcome into our day. Hallelujah, glory be to the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Good morning, people of God. Good morning, good morning. As I welcome the Holy Spirit, hallelujah, I ask God to just cover you, touch you, just to minister to you and to minister to your family in a way like never before. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. As I said, uh, please, if you can, go ahead and share the broadcast. Share the broadcast. Share the, the YouTube page. Hallelujah. Liberty for Living Ministries, RMW. Share the YouTube page with persons uh, so that they can be blessed. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God. What a mighty God we serve. Hallelujah. Good morning. Blessed of the Lord. Healed of the Lord. Camille Dixon. Hallelujah. You are blessed of the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory be to the name of the Holy One of Israel. He is God all by himself. There is no God like our Jehovah. Hallelujah. Each and every one of you, I prophesy to you this morning. Today is Prophetic Wednesday. And I prophesy to you that you are healed of the Lord, blessed of the Lord, anointed of the Lord, appointed of the Lord, called and chosen of the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Glory be to the name of the Holy One of Israel. Great and faithful is the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Hallelujah. You know, I was listening to a, a, a gentleman this morning. Hallelujah. May God help us. May God bless us. And it just, um, as I as I heard, in preparation for uh, this time of meditation and worship and honor of the God of all creation, um, I turned on the, the 
the phones to uh, the various platforms and on TikTok before you go to to uh, to broadcast you will hear a particular message that was on that was streaming and the message that was streaming was from uh, uh, Bishop uh, Pastor Gino Jennings and they were asking him about church today and um, and praise dance and these kinds of things and you know Pastor Jennings is not someone that I necessarily speak bad or anything about um, because he's a member of the clergy and um, though he might be might have some ways of doing things that are a little bit draconian and a little bit outside of the the the, the grace are the, the heart of God in a lot of ways a lot of ways more ways than not that man of God is truly truly centered in understanding of who God is and what God requires of us uh, is he does he go over the edge a little bit um, sometimes yes uh, does he have some uh, kind of misunderstandings of what the heart of God is concerning the, 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 the execution of the scriptures? Yes, but so does all of us. Some persons go overboard with control. Some persons go overboard with uh, freedom. And so overboard in any direction at all is still overboard amen and so if he goes overboard with control and wanting people to do only what he says according to how he interprets scripture um, that's 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 not necessarily correct but it's not necessarily correct to, to to go the complete opposite of that as well to allow people to do whatever they want to do to live however they want to live and to be however they want to be because God's kingdom is a kingdom run by a king and a kingdom cannot run a kingdom cannot exist without structure without order without rules and regulations and so hallelujah there are um, there are rules and regulations and today's church unfortunately uh, detest rules and regulations today's uh, kingdom citizens detest rules and regulations because we think that rules and regulations are not for the church God has died Jesus died on the cross to, uh, and release grace and that grace gives us independence that grace gives us freedom that grace gives us opportunities to do and to be that grace gives us uh, freedom or grace to 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 to, um, to do whatever and uh, and just live whatever to have our own personal relationship as we like to say and to go after what we want to go after and I'm saying to you while that is true and that is a, a legacy that we have uh, freedom in the kingdom of God is not freedom to do as we please it's the freedom that allows us to but it is not freedom to and that's a that's a big difference as simplistic and as maybe even confusing as it sounds we have the freedom to honor God and to walk according to his will and his purpose we have the freedom to be disciplined we have the freedom to 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 spend time with God and to learn of his ways and to walk in the fear and admonition of God to walk holy as he is holy to walk in his righteous robe come on that's what we have the freedom to do we have the freedom to make a choice not to be wild and wicked and disrespectful and dishonoring and um, in discipline we have the freedom not to do those things as well as we have the freedom to do those things and so people of God it's important that we don't get caught up in today's uh, misnomer, misunderstanding of what the kingdom really requires of us. Not an extreme in one or the other direction, but an understanding of the responsibility of our freedom. Freedom comes with a responsibility. If you, those of you who have children, when your child is between uh, zero or two years old so to speak two years old and uh, 18 between 2 and 18 you take full responsibility for what happens to that child how they function how they operate what they how they think uh, regardless 
um, of course there is some measure of freedom but that freedom is watched over by you and so even in conversations you will say to that child so what do you think and then when they give their opinion if it is wayward if it is guided by um, the misunderstandings and the and the idiosyncrasies of the world then you bring them back in center and center them around the foundation of the Word of God righteousness holiness and truth around uh, the, the, the the center of uh, Christian values and, 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 and beliefs and process and so for 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 from birth to 18 or thereabouts or just about when they 17 plus uh, you are fully responsible for how you guide how they see freedom and too many of us are reaping the benefits reaping the consequences of not paying close attention to how hallelujah we 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 guarded and and, and and taught our children responsibility for their freedom we gave them the freedom and we allowed them their their their, their parents now who allow their children to express themselves um as as much as they can because they are individuals and the systems have been set up now to allow freedom of expression and freedom of behavior and freedom to be and to do for, for whatever they want to be and do and um, and that is a satanic agenda to create anarchy to create uh, indiscipline to create uh, chaos to create uh, confusion that's that's what that is persons who have gone who have walked the road I mean, when, 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 uh, just as an example, Sister Denise or Sister Kerian, who have children, Sister Kerian has a, a wonderful, amazing son, and Sister Denise has an amazing daughter, uh, who have come up through the system. But I know that no matter what anyone tells me, if Sister Kerian or Sister Denise looks back on their life today, um, now, and say to themselves, what are some of the things I could have done differently as a parent, as a mother? I know that there are elements that you look at your child now and maybe would say, I would have done this differently. I would have spoken to them more. I would have uh, caused them to, to be more steadfast, more disciplined, more attentive, more. Uh, there are things that you would change because now you know more because you have experienced. Amen. And so uh, adults are supposed to train up children from their experience from their experience come on the main thing that a parent should train up their children from is experience the mistakes that you have made you have to discipline your child i say to my son daily i wish i had someone who was there to to, to stop me from playing so much to stop me from um skipping school to stop me from just to to train me up and to help to to guide me in the way of discipline in the way of of, of, of steadfastness in, in developing a, a, a systematic lifestyle it doesn't affect my freedom of, of character building and my freedom of thought no it just helps to guide it and so please I'm begging you if you have children now or if you have young children or grandchildren or if you have any opportunity to influence children don't just leave them up don't follow the satanic agenda that says uh, allow your children to have freedom of expression because there are so many things now that has that has become difficult uh, my son grew up in that in that atmosphere of freedom of expression and freedom to do and to be and um, it's so difficult now sometimes to just get him to understand the, the, the atmosphere the environment that he's in and to understand that some things are not done in this atmosphere where you can play with daddy at home you can punch daddy at home and have fun and wrestle daddy at home but you don't do that in public you don't do that in the movie theater or in the restaurant or or, uh, or in the supermarket uh, and these are things that parents some of the simple insignificant things that we as parents um, we think okay so allow the child to express themselves because if you try to discipline them in the supermarket or in the in the uh, restaurant or in the movie theater persons are looking on and saying what is wrong why don't you leave the child let him express himself let let them do um, you know let them be them that's 
input from a satanic agenda because if a child does not learn where and when and how to operate when to express themselves and when to be quiet when to 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 to, to state their opinion and when not to my son will see someone on the street and because he's accustomed to expressing himself he may say whoa that's ugly that's not appropriate that's not cool that's not cool why does why why does he smell like that that's not cool and so I say to you that we have made many mistakes with how we have raised our children and to bring it back in center we're, we're, we're still making too many mistakes in how we process and how we identify and how we 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 we, we matriculate as christians we have we ourselves have become indisciplined and though god tries in every way that he can especially by the word by the ministers of the gospel of jesus christ to keep us in check and to create opportunities for discipline and to to to, to walk holy and upright the word says if you love me keep my commandments ah hallelujah the word says be he holy for i am holy the word says because uh, uh, grace abound should sin abound no not at all but yet we don't see some of those things and others many many others that the word of god holds true we we run around and we do whatever we want um in a lot of instances and that doesn't mean that's everyone it doesn't even mean that there is anyone who does that on this platform of the fourth watch hour but that it's still the body of christ that i'm talking about not just us and so we, 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 we go about and we do whatever seems right to us, that freedom. But that level of freedom where we do what seems right in our eyes is a satanic freedom, not a God's freedom. God's freedom allows us the right to choose between right and wrong and to do right. He says, I place before you life and death, blessing and curse. And then he subtly says, I would inspire you. I would encourage you to choose life amen and so choosing life means choosing discipline choosing life means choosing righteousness holiness and truth choosing life means choosing uh, a life representing Christ rather than a life representing sin come on somebody it's it comes with a responsibility the responsibility of choice but if we never learned if none of us were taught by our parents how to choose life how to walk upright, how to, 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 to spread our beds, how to clean up our rooms, how to, to, to go to church, how to pay attention in church, how to sit still in church. My, my, my son, I can use my own family at all times. I love my son dearly, but my son uh, is not one of those children that was um, effectively churched. Remember, my life with Christ and my life as a father didn't overlap in a lot of instances and so um when 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 he's when he's here and he has to go to church because he was not trained up from a young boy in church and church uh, responsibility and church discipline he's all over the place he he doesn't want to sit in church he wants to go play on his phone and when he's in church he wants to lay down on me or on the chair and 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 it just it just looks bad because persons who are looking on who grew up in church and who have grown up their children in church are saying why is pastor's son so um, all over the place doing this doing that getting up running there running there pastor's son is supposed to be the picture of discipline and so we make these assessments and assumptions about things that we see because we don't know the backstory. And rightly so, um, those things should be. Those things should be. But I'm also saying to you that we find ourselves in unfortunate situations in single parent raising of children, situations and circumstances where um, persons are too pressured or too 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 weighed down too burdened in order to be able to do certain things um in their role and responsibility in training up the child in the way they should grow and so we have to become a family and one of the things i really love about the church that god has given us to be a partner in and a family in is that we have 
uh, family members around. We have people who will hold us accountable, people who will take the responsibility to say, come, sit, look, pay attention, um, and without without even um, thinking, oh, I'm not saying anything because that's pastor's son, or oh, I'm leaving him alone because this is, yeah. We have a community because it takes a village to raise a child. That's one of the things that Satan has removed from the from the from 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 our society as well. He he caused people to stop caring. He caused people to stop sharing. He caused people to stop watching out for other people by introducing pedophilia, by introducing uh, abuse, by introducing kidnapping, um, child child pornography, by introducing. Um, all manner of evil can cope with so people have become so afraid those who are who mean evil uh, people hide their children from them and those who mean well um, are afraid because if they try to scold or to to direct or to discipline a child in the way that is right um, it becomes an issue where even the police could get involved the parent or parents could easily um, do great harm to you teachers are afraid to discipline children because the parents will come to the school and um, even if you are correct in how and why you discipline the child the parent will still come and, and, and want to fight and do harm to the teacher and so when the child is out of control and in discipline and behaving irrational and, and irreverent and dishonoring uh, the, the teacher will just either put them out of the classroom or ignore them and that just creates a society of, 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 of discord, of disrespect, of, 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 of anarchy and chaos and we wonder why we have what we have. It's because Satan has infiltrated and we have ate or bitten of the apple of freedom. Freedom is not just freedom to do anything you want or we want. Freedom comes with a responsibility. Freedom comes with a manual and that manual is the Bible. No free person, no free person can operate effectively in our society without a manual. Governments have a manual. It's called the Constitution, Bill of Rights, these kinds of things. That's the constitution of our society. The road code. Come on. Things like you have to pay your taxes at a particular time. Land taxes. Income taxes. There's, there, there, there are codes and disciplines. When you live in a certain community. My brother bought a house in a community. And there are rules and regulations. They, they basically dictate to you as if they are the one that gave you or rented a house to you. You bought your house, but they dictate how when your lawn must be cut, how high your grass can be, what color paint you must paint your house. It can't be certain things. There are certain communities where you, you, you they, they dictate how you build, the way that you do things. So society has laws and rules. When did we get to the place where the only place where we don't have any laws, any rules, the only place where we don't want to follow any rules and regulations is in church, in the kingdom of God. The devil is a liar. That's a Luciferian manual that we are reading from. That manual does not represent the Bible. And we as believers, as children of God, as kingdom citizens, need to go back and look in the manual of God because if we don't follow that manual we will be great citizens my brother will follow all the rules and regulations of the of the of the, the code of his community the code of his business the code of, 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 of his life personally but if he doesn't follow the same codes of the scriptures the same code of discipline if we don't follow the same rules follow the rules of the Bible the same way that we follow the rules of our job, the rules of our complex that we live in. If you don't pay the maintenance at the end of the month, you live in an apartment and you don't pay the maintenance each month, they put a padlock on your door and they lock you out of a place where you bought. You bought it. Cash money or you're paying the mortgage. But if you don't pay the maintenance, which is part of the process, part of the whole package, part of the reason why you're living there, then you get thrown out. 
but we're living in the kingdom of God and we don't want to pay maintenance. We don't want to um, do op operate according to the rules of the kingdom. We don't want to pray without ceasing. We don't want to live in love. We don't want to give. We just want to live. Some persons are saying, oh, I'm glad that um, tithe and offering is done away with. I want to keep everything for myself. Nothing like that. That's a Luciferian tactics. You cannot live in society without paying your way. You cannot live in a society without paying your way. Hear me, people of God. You pay your taxes. Come on. You pay toll to drive on the road. That's paying your way. In the kingdom, you pay your way by spending time with God. You pay your way by reading the word and living according to the rules of the word. You pay your way by paying your tithe, contributing to the system that holds you dear, that, that, that minister to you, that draw you into, into what God is doing and keeps you focused, helps you. It's like, it's like school. When you pay your tithe and offering and give seed at church, it's like paying school fee. It's like paying for the school to continue to run so that it can not only uh, take care of your child but other people's children as well and so when you pay your tithe and offering what you're doing is saying to God the school that you have set up as a church uh, God Almighty I'm paying into making sure that it expands that it enlarges, that it continues to grow and support others but yet a lot of persons in the kingdom today it is the, the, the statistics have gone out that only about 20% or less of people that are benefiting from the school called church from the kingdom of God that has been established pay into it to ensure that it continues and so that's that has given rise to the prosperity gospel that has given rise to the abuse of persons by certain types of giftings and certain types of titles or office that has given rise to that kind of abuse and that's unfortunate because it shouldn't be so. The pulpit should not be free. Apostles and prophets and preachers and teachers and evangelists should not be free to abuse persons and to scheme and scam money out of out of us. It's not that's not that's not the freedom. But we are not free to not give into the kingdom of God so that there can be meat in God's house. So that the widows and the orphans and the priests, all those who are in the office of the fivefold, can live and their families can live so that they can be a blessing as the lecturers. They can continue to lecture, to teach as I am doing now so that persons can learn and grow and evolve and become and contribute to the kingdom. And so the whole chain of events, hallelujah, the whole chain of events is being affected negatively all the way down to the family and i don't know if it starts with church or it starts with how we, we we parent whichever one satan has chosen to attack first i would think that he chose to attack the family first to create indiscipline in the family to create a lack of of of, of um of commitment and covenant in the family because if the father leaves if the husband leaves if the boyfriend leaves the family then that structure of discipline, that structure of providing, that structure of protection is now broken. That covenant is not there. And so the woman is left with the child in a lot of instances. Not all, but in a lot of instances. More instances than not. The woman is left with the child. And especially a son. The girl is bad and not so bad. But when it's a son, what happens is that the, the, the boy now becomes raised as one that is emotional and one that um, is, is doing things not from the way that is, he's supposed to as God ordained. Because a lion teaches a lion how to be a lion. A lioness does not teach a male cub how to hunt, how to kill, how to be aggressive. You see what I'm saying? And so a female, it is difficult. It's not impossible. By God's grace, anything is possible. But it is way more difficult for a female to teach a male how to be a male. Where did your experience come from? How do, how, how, how do you get to know how a male thinks, what a male does? How do, you show, how do you show a male? How do you demonstrate to a male how, to, how, how, how he's to be? 
it's not natural for you and so it comes back to how uh, our whole concept our whole lives have been infiltrated and strategically manipulated and we don't even know so we're free um one of the things satan says to to, to our women um of the apple of eve is i can do bad all by myself i can do bad all by myself i don't need no man to help me raise my children i can do it by myself i have an education i have a good job I have a house that I live in and I can pay my bills. So I don't need no man. I can do all I can do bad all by myself. That's a bite of the apple of deception. Why would you want to do bad any at all? And when you prophesy I can do bad all by myself, bad in that context, in that spiritual context, may not represent bad economically, bad socially. But it has a bad that will pay a pr that you'll pay a price for later because that bad might be how your, your your son or your daughter turn out the character the moral character and fiber of your children might be what is a representation of bad and so when we say i can do bad all by myself that's if you have ever said that if you have ever said that in jest, if you have ever said that um, because of your circumstances, you need to go back and repent and renounce that and cancel it off of your children and your children's children because bad is only in our lives when we make wrong decisions, when we allow Lucifer and his strategies to enter our lives through certain types of, of systems to how we see what we how we choose men oh i like me, my i like my man tall dark and handsome i like my man brown with thin lips and curly hair i like my girl curvy i like my girl a certain complexion a certain height a certain weight when we take those things into consideration rather than i like my girl centered rooted in god grounded in righteousness holiness and truth grounded in honor in wisdom knowledge and understanding because the external will fade the external will go the external will change but the character and nature that represents the true foundation of a person will only get better the external that we're attracted by only gets worse it only gets worse it hardly gets better as you get older that's why the children of Israel were chastised by Jesus who said Moses gave you a bill of divorce Moses allowed you to divorce because of the hardness of your heart as the women got older they would get married like married like at 16 17 18 sometimes 20 but by 25 or 30 when they're still young and in their prime a 30 year old woman today is a young woman in the fullness of her prime looking good fine strong but back then by the time a woman got to 30 um it was time for her to be changed out a new model was needed a new model was needed you see what I'm saying? Because they had this thing that by the time 30, she would have had maybe three, four, five children already and, and, and start to look different from when they, 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 they were betrothed at 16 or 17. And so the things of the external, when we look at them, whether it be money, whether it be looks, whether it be shape, uh, everything that is external will fade because it is exposed to the environment but the things that are internal are only exposed to our soul and our spirit they are impacted by our environment but not in the same way that they that the external are impacted and so if our character if our soul if our spirits are developed and strengthened and trained up in the way they should go and people begin to be attracted to each other for the internal elements and the internal factors of our lives we will have less and less single parenting less and less indisciplined households less and less indisciplined people less and less indisciplined governments 
less and less in disciplined countries. And so we have to identify as believers, as kingdom citizens, where the root of the problem is. Where did Satan infiltrate and contaminate and go back to the root of that and dig it up with every root and destroy it, rebuke and discharge it so that our society can truly be a reflection of God again and his principles. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. So God is a good God. So we have to prophesy. And remember, everything that we do in this fourth watch hour, it is preparation for, for, for prayer. Preparation for prayer. So when we talk about these things, it is not just to see them and to hear them. Hallelujah. Um, oh, thank you. Thank you, Brother Marlon. Praise God. I, I just love all your sharp. Thank you. So, so, so Brother Gina Jennings was saying uh, this morning that church has lost its 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 focus on god because god the focus on god come on the focus on uh, the the bible says that uh, the children of israel knew the the acts of god but moses knew the ways of god the church has become like the children of israel the, in, in other words in my words um according to what he's saying he says that the, 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 the church has become one that is focused predominantly on the acts of God. And hence the prosperity gospel. Hence the do as ever, whatever you please. Hence the living by grace instead of receiving grace. So we live by grace, which means that we constantly need grace not to exist, but to repair us from the things that we, we constantly do that is not of God. Grace is supposed to be a safety net, not shoes that we walk in. Grace is supposed to come when we're sinking, not to keep us all the time in our sinking state. Amen? And so, um, you know, some persons may disagree, but that's just my concept. I might be wrong, and I'm not saying that I am absolutely correct. But what he was saying is uh, the persons have lost their 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 honor and their respect he said something that i didn't know and i don't know um if he's right if it's true but he hardly ever speaks um from a place that is not factual because he loves being right <laughs> and he says in churches now it would seem like in the states and whatever is in the states spread to other nations he says now there there's church twerking there's a there's a there, there's the kind of um, praise dance in church that is called church twerking and one of my pet peeves have been over the years that the church takes the place of the origin of gifts and talents and abilities seem to be so inadequate so unable to access the source of creativity creative ideas and witty inventions that we end up having to be the ones that take from the world and try to transform or reform or reshape to suit and um, how we honor God. So Satan comes up with different beats and different um, sounds and different things uh, because he's into music. And the one who gave him the anointing for music the one who gave him the ability to create music, the one who gave him the giftings to, 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 to formulate songs and music that he gives to his, his, his people. We, the Christians, who have him who created all things and gave to Satan inside of us, have to take what Satan has created and try to forge it and reshape it and remodel it to give it to God. So no matter what, how you take it, you're really, you're really and truly taking something that Satan has contaminated or created and then say that that's all you can give to God, all we can give to God as worship. And so Pastor Jennings was saying, um, in discipline is, is, is never going to a church or, ch or the churches of today built on in discipline are never going to last. Grace is never going to be sufficient for indiscipline because indiscipline works to the benefit of grace and grace to the benefit of discipline. 
discipline works to the benefit of grace and grace works to the benefit of discipline are you hearing me and so when you, discipline means when i desire to read the word and i don't i don't I, I i just don't feel like i can i don't feel like i need to i don't feel like i want to i'm bombarded by the things of the world and I want to, to just go do something else. I want to go enjoy myself. I want to go out and have a drink. I want to go out and talk to some friends. I want to spend time on social media. If I say, no, I, am, I want to be disciplined in spending time in the Word every day, God's grace will allow me to do it. God's grace will give me the strength, give me the resolve, give me the push to do it. And so discipline benefits grace and grace benefits discipline. Discipline gives us access to grace and the grace we access gives us the benefits of our discipline. And so in the absence of discipline, there is absence of grace. Not in its purest sense because as long as we're alive, grace is manifesting. But there are things that we do not have access to that we should have because our indiscipline does not allow us to be on that journey on that road, on that path that will allow us to access what we desire because of God's grace. And so every time that we go in a different direction, grace keeps us from dying. Grace keeps us from being destroyed. Grace keeps us from being sick. Grace keeps us from a lot of things. But it is not the full extent of God's grace. Because if we had stayed on the pathway of discipline and walking according to God's commands and rules and regulations, His grace would produce better blessings, better outcome, not just preserve us, but elevate us, advance us. Amen? And so, it is very important that we distinctly understand. And so, let me go back, Mal, and, um, in, and, and, and wrap up what I was saying. Um, Bishop... Pastor Jennings was saying he has seven children and he says if his seven children um, don't honor or respect the, him or his wife, then anarchy and chaos is what will, will, will prevail in the house and the house structure, the family structure um, would, would fall apart. And that's what's happening in the church and that's what's happening in, in the nation. And in communities, there is very little honor and discipline. Everyone is doing what seems right in their own eyes. And the church, as he said, is now only mostly interested in, in prosperity. And so if there is indiscipline, pastors and post, uh, apostles and prophets will say, if you want to succeed, don't worry about discipline. Don't worry about prayer. Don't worry about hard work. Don't worry about fasting. Don't worry about any of those things. Just bring some money. Bring some money. And if you bring some money, I will entertain you. So that's how the twerking come in and the, the, the dancing. And so you sweat and you get distracted like in the world. When you feel stressed, you go to the club. You go to a party. Come on. You go to a bar. You have a drink. You get distracted from the reality of your life, the reality of existence. And you keep going to those places to find peace. Some people get distracted. They go, they, they, they find peace and comfort in, in intimacy, in, in sex with people that they're not married to, in all kinds. Of, and so once you're drawn away from discipline of self-control, of power and love, you're drawn into a world of indiscipline. And a world of indiscipline can never produce successful outcomes. So if you, if, you, if you hide from your troubles, if you seek to drown your sorrows in a bar or in the arms of a male or a female or in a party or in weed or any other kind of drugs, your outcome is going to be a very dangerous one. And the same thing in the church. It, that's right, that's right, it destroys. And so we must be very careful in how we function and how we, and, and how we teach people how to function. Amen? I struggle. The things that I struggle with in life, 
Yes, Antipat, the body of Christ is in trouble. Why? Because we don't have discipline as our foundation. Do you know that too many people, I don't want to say most, but too many people in the body of Christ don't read the word? We don't read the word. We go for short-lived pleasures. Thank you, Sister Raxine. Sister Raquel, we go for short-lived pleasures. You know what our short-lived pleasure is? When we go to a conference, when we go to church on a Sunday or on a Saturday, that's our short-lived pleasure. That's like when we're in the world and we go to the bar on a Friday evening and we drink and drink and drink and we feel tipsy and nice and we make our way home and that holds us until next Friday again. It's the same kind of thing. We go to church on a Sunday or on a Saturday and we drink and drink of the atmosphere of praise and worship and prayer and a prophetic word. I prophesy, prophesy, prophesy man of God, prophesy woman of God and we prophesy and we feel good and we feel excited. It's just like a bar. It's just like a party. It's just like a sexual encounter. It's momentarily. It's momentary, sorry. It's momentary. Discipline requires that we create an atmosphere of righteousness, holiness, and truth daily in everything that we do. The fear of God. And some, the man of God was saying that the fear of God has left the church. The fear of God has left the church. We don't fear God anymore. We do anything that we want to. I hear people say sometimes, um, my relationship with God is different. I talk to God. I say, yo, God, warm to you. How long it will take you to do, my, do, do the thing for me? How long? I don't understand God. What is this? And this is supported in church because they said God's grace allows you freedom to, encom to, to come before him. Some even have scriptures. The Bible says we must come before the Lord boldly as a son, as a child of the king. I have access to talk to my God about how I feel. The devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. There are some of us who are going to find out the hard way on judgment day. That how we approach God and how we talk to God and how we think we can encounter and deal with God. There is no precedence for that in scripture. None. Everyone who encountered God in scripture, both literally and by faith, encountered him with respect and with honor. The Jews for years never even called God's name because his name was too holy. But we now we use his name as curse word. We use his name as curse word. Even as Christians, a Christian get a bite by a mosquito. The first thing them say is J Christ. That's correct. And the people who are in the natural, we hold them with great respect. We hold them with great respect. We honor pastors, apostles and bishops more excellently than we do God. We go to God and say, God, what's this? What's this, God? Where is my, what, 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 what happened? God, what you doing? Person say, I'm vexed with God. But you, you, have you been vexed with your father? Have you told your, 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 your father or your pastor that you're vexed with him or her? Pastor, I'm mad at you. I'm not talking to you, pastor. Most of us would not deal with our pastors that way. But we say we deal with God that way. You have freedom to deal with God that way. We show more honor to pastors, to apostles, prophets, and bishops, and these men of the cloth who are imperfect in all their ways than we do to God who is perfect in all his ways. He who preserves us and keeps us. So we have to shift that pendulum. I'm not saying start with this honor our leaders know I would never encourage anyone to do that. But I'm saying, do not honor your leaders, your pastors, your presidents and prime ministers more than God. God is worthy of more honor than any man. God is worthy of more respect and praise and worship than any man. We honor sports heroes, baseball, basketball, soccer, American football, track and field. 
we honor our sports stars way more in a lot of instances than we do God. But we don't pay attention to it. We don't think about it because it's not a deliberate thing. It is strategically the apple that we have eaten off by Satan that have us deceived. So we go before God any and any old way and say, oh God, not worry about our our, our garments. Rend, rend, <laughs> I hear people say it all the time. Render your heart and not your garment. That's not what the scripture meant. That's not what the scripture says. It's not even render your heart. It's rent as in tear. So the Jews had a system, a process, where whenever they are sad, whenever they wanted God to intervene, whenever they needed um, to, 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 to hear, the, 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 not just the Jews, the Pharisees in particular, um, the scribes and the Pharisees, whenever they were, uh, they, they, they were under bondage, under pressure, um, had problems, and they needed God's attention, they would tear their clothes and, and, and throw um, ashes on themselves, sackcloth and ashes. They would tear their clothes, which means to rent, to tear. And God was saying, to tear your clothes is easy, but your heart is still, is still cold. Your heart is still wicked. And so Jesus was saying, stop tearing your clothes, come on, and tear your heart. If you tear your heart, tear away the evil, tear away the scars, tear away the wickedness from your heart, then I would be able to pour into it goodness and mercy, grace and peace. And so what Brother Jennings was saying in a nutshell is we have to get back to a place where we start examining our own lives, our own discipline, our own the things that we are allowing in our household because that's where it starts. Every church is supported and fed by the family, by the home. Every church every society, every community, every parliament, every government, every police force, every soldier um, battalion is fed by the family. And so everything that we see manifesting in the world today, every law, every rule, every position that is taken by people in positions of authority and governmental systems, they are making these decisions because of how they were trained up in their homes how they were influenced either by how they personally were influenced in their home or how they are influenced by others who were influenced negatively in their home and so the kingdom of God is a representation in a lot of instances of how persons were trained up in their home or the lack thereof because the Bible says if you train up a child in the way they should grow, not just if you train them up, period, but if you train them up in the way they should grow, they will not depart from it. And it is the same for the negative. If the children are trained up in negative, they become like the current presidents and prime ministers that we have across the world that are only interested in evil, only interested in wars, sexual immorality, all manner of evil concupiscence. If you trained up a child in the way they should go, despite the fact that they studied law, they will be the worst judges on the bench. I have seen some decisions coming from some so-called brilliant people who call themselves judges, who are supposed to be able to analyze from the perspective of the depths of society and make decisions that will elevate society. And the decisions that they make, you say, my God, my God, I remember this one case in particular, most Americans will remember it, but it was a, a story across the entire world where this lady went to McDonald's years ago, bought a cup of coffee, bought a cup of coffee, put the coffee between her leg while she's driving, having to move her leg from the brake to the gas, from the gas to the brake. And in moving her leg in and out, she squeezed the cup and the coffee spilled on her private area and burnt her. She went to the court and sued McDonald's and got millions of dollars, millions of dollars. And I'm saying to myself, to this day, years later, it still frustrates me. I am saying, if someone came before me in a courtroom,
If I was a judge and someone came before me in a courtroom, if I was a father and my child came before me, my grown child, 30 years old, 25 years old, and said, Daddy, I want you to go down to McDonald's and do something bad to the manager because I bought a cup of coffee and I put it between my legs and it spilled and burned me and so I need retribution. I need for you to go have a talk with that manager. I would slap that child so hard, I would need to get um, counseling. I would need to get counseling because I would wonder where did I go wrong. It has to be a parental issue that causes someone to be so dumb. Pardon me, I don't mean any disrespect. I'm just talking from my heart. It's hard to accept that someone could be so senile, so, so mentally disturbed that they would put hot coffee between their legs in a car, not on a, a park bench, and you just catch it there for a moment to take it up and drink. In a car while you're driving, and you get rewarded for that with millions of dollars, and you wonder why our society is the way it is, she went before a judge and made a case that the company who is supposed to sell coffee to people who understands that coffee is a hot beverage that is supposed to be put in, have in your hand and put in your belly, not between your legs. And she was rewarded with millions of dollars. And we wonder why our society is the way it is. So this morning, I prophesy that we will not be the same. <laughs> Sister Denise says, Pastor, that is the love of money. And the, <laughs> the what? Litigious, uh, lit litigious society England and America has created. I, unfortunately, but it comes from indiscipline. So remember, guys, we often only see the manifestation. Come on. Let's keep it solid. We only see the manifestation of Satan's work under the quiet. Satan erodes in discipline. Satan tells us that we don't have to we don't have to give. We don't have to support the poor. We don't have to be conscientious of, of widows and orphans. We don't have to pay attention to those who are being abused, children that are being kidnapped and killed. We don't have to focus on those things. We don't have to focus on the, 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 the degradation of the family and the, the family structure. But when the manifestation, when the presidents and prime ministers that are in the White House and in the, in the, in the, in the Blue House and the Pink House and the Purple House and the multicolored houses that exist across the world as representation of parliamentary, parliamentary power, when these houses and the people that are in them starts to behave like those judges, who more pay persons who act stupidly, unrighteously, unholily, when the laws and rules are only suited, are only benefit persons who are completely distorted and warped in character and nature, by that time it's too late because they have infiltrated the, the fabric of our society and they have taken the foothold. They are now the judges. They are now the members of parliament, the senators. They are now the presidents and prime ministers and vice presidents. They are now in the seat of power, making decisions that we can no longer have any impact on. And you vote them out and the next set is just as bad or worse. And so, people of God, people of God, let us not respond to the outcome of bad behavior that started years ago. Let us not look at what indiscipline produce, but look at indiscipline itself. Let us not be a party to entertainment in church. Church is not a bar. Church is a place of honor and worship and glory. Let us not um, Ignore what is happening in our community, in our family. Let us not ignore the fact that your child or children speak to you any way they feel like, speak to adults any way they feel like, and you laugh and say, oh, they're just, it's just freedom of expression. No, it's not. It's a discipline that is going to come back to haunt you later. Amen. 
I can't tell you how to run your household. I can't tell you how to raise your children. And I'm not trying to do that. I'm saying to you that God says foolishness is in the heart of the child. But the run of correction will drive it out. It doesn't just mean a whip or a belt or a piece of stick or a shoe. It doesn't just mean taking away tablets and put them in naughty corner. It doesn't just mean that. It means if foolishness is in the heart of the child, the rod of correction is also deliverance. The rod of correction is also the word of God. Plant a different seed in the child that they might not be distorted within discipline. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. God has given us power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. And nothing shall by any means hurt us. But we're not using what God has given us to deal with the issues in our family. And as a result, it is affecting our community and it is affecting our nation. And so what we see now is not just a manifestation of prophecy. It's a manifestation of idiocy. It's a manifestation of indiscipline. It's a manifestation of dishonor and the lack of the fear of God. So in a nutshell, what the man of God was saying in this thing this morning is that indiscipline and the lack of fear of God is why the churches in general the kingdom of God in particular and our society as a whole is in the state that it is in now. And unless we address the issue of indiscipline on all fronts, we will continue to go down the slippery slope heading towards hell instead of heading up towards heaven. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Let us pray. Father, I just thank you this morning Whew. that you took my tongue and taught me what to say. This was not where I was going, but Lord, I pray that your people will be encouraged. It's not the best of news, but it is news nonetheless. It is what we need to hear that we might make changes, that we might begin to focus and look intently at our situations and circumstances, that we might bring change to our own homes, our own lives, and by extension, the community and even our nation. Nineveh was in a bad state, a bad state, and you sent Jonah with a word. And that word hit the life and the mind and the heart of the king and all of his court and the entire nation repented and down to the very animals were saved you are still able to turn around nations with a word father i pray that every fourth watch family member will become a conduit a hose a vessel a tool for the transformation of nations in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I pray, O oh God, that you'll raise up some Jeremiah's, some Joshua's, some Samuel's, some Elijah's, some Elisha's, some Moses, some David's, some Daniel's, some Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego's, some Esther's, some Ruth's, in the mighty name, some Naomi's, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, I pray even now, and I declare and prophesy by the will and purpose of God, that you'll raise up some mighty warriors, some solid people of God in this family that will go out and, and preach and teach and impact the world for your glory and for your name's sake. I declare and decree that none among us shall lack anything needed to transform our families, our communities, and our, and our nation. In the name of Jesus Christ, I prophesy that great men and women shall arise in this family in the name of Jesus Christ, and their enemies will scatter. I declare, O God Almighty, that we shall be peered with angels, peered with the Holy Spirit, to cause thousands and tens of thousands 
of enemies against the kingdom of God, enemies against our nation, enemies against our family, to be defeated in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I pray, oh God, that you'll raise up some Gideons in this season, in this family, in the name of Jesus, that will not look to be a part of any 10,000 or 20,000 church, but God, with just two or three or four or five, we will go and destroy the works of the enemy in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I pray, oh God, that you'll raise up some persons in this family, in this fourth watch family that will say, hallelujah, I'm ready to chase my thousand until I meet the one that will come together with me to chase the 10,000. I pray, oh God, that you'll raise up some persons in this family that will be so full of faith that they will take on any storm and say, peace be still. I pray, God, that you'll raise up some people in this family that will stand on your word that says, hallelujah, I am able to tread upon every serpent and scorpion that comes. I will not fear because my God has not given me a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind that you'll raise up some people who will swing the sword and say that the weapon of my warfare are not carnal, but mighty through my God to the pulling down of strongholds. And so every stronghold that come against me, every stronghold that come against my family, every stronghold that come against my nation, I swing my sword now like Elijah. I tear down every altar, every, every Baal altar, every prophet of Baal I swing my sword of the spirit in the realm of the spirit and I cut off heads, every Goliath that come against my family, that come against my community, that come against my nation every Goliath spirit of sexual immorality, every Goliath spirit of confusion, every Goliath spirit of indiscipline, every Goliath spirit of wickedness I cut off your head this day in the mighty name of Jesus Christ come on people of God, we got to get to that place uh, where we understand what we're fighting against. Uh because if we start to treat the sore, it is too late. The symptom, uh, the thing that is underneath, the thing that caused the wound is more important than the wound itself. Anyone can stitch up a wound, but not everyone can stop a wound from appearing. A wound of indiscipline has created a sore of chaos and anarchy. Ah, uh, God, we got to get to that wound of indiscipline and we got to fix it in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Lord, give us the anointing and the ability to be a problem solver in this season. Solving the problem of indiscipline. Solving the problem of dishonor. Solving the problem of pride and fear and lust and greed. Father, give us the anointing, hallelujah, to cast out those devils from our people, from our families, and even from our leaders. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we are asking you, Lord Jesus Christ, Lord, we're asking you this morning, we're asking you today, this afternoon, tonight, whatever time zone your people are in that are hearing me and those who will hear delayed, we are asking you for the anointing to shift that which concerns our families, our communities, and our nation. Make us problem solvers, O oh Lord. Lord, you came and demonstrated a problem-solving anointing. You gave that problem-solving anointing by the Holy Ghost to the disciples who became apostles and they transformed and continued your work. Father, we have fallen short. We have dropped the ball. We have dropped the button and got disqualified. But your grace is sufficient to qualify us to get back in the race. And so, Lord, the Fourth Watch family takes the baton this morning. And we want to run with it by your strengthening, by your grace, by your mercy, by your spirit. We want to continue the race, O God Almighty. And so anoint us like you did the apostles. Anoint us, O God, like you did those in the upper room at Pentecost. Anoint us, O God Almighty, like you did Samuel, like you did Elisha. Drop a mantle upon us, O God, that we will do what we see you do. And even greater works in this season make us anointed sons that you can trust in the mighty name of jesus christ of nazareth that in the last days we will not hear depart from me i never knew you you worker of iniquity but we the fourth watch family and our family members will hear well done good and faithful servant enter into my rest in the name of jesus christ of nazareth amen and amen Hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, give God a praise. Give God a praise. Give God a praise. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. God is good. Hallelujah to our King. Hallelujah to our King. 
God is good and God is great. Amen. And so, hallelujah. It doesn't matter if you like Pastor Gina Jennings or not. He has a good point. If we continue down the road of indiscipline, anarchy and chaos is what we will reap in the family, in the community, and in the nation. And discipline is not what man says. Discipline is what God says. Let's walk in the way of God and that will produce discipline. Discipline will produce prosperity and good success. Not a seed, not an offering, not your tithe. Your giving of even your time does not produce discipline. Discipline is produced by obedience to the word. Obedience to the word. Amen. Praise God from whom our blessings flow. All right. Um, <laughs> I went off in a completely different direction that I didn't plan to go this morning, but we give God all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. I hope that you were encouraged and blessed, and I hope that our eyes, mine as well, was opened to, to, to see the underbelly, the depths of Satan's deception, because we often only see the manifestation of his works, but the deception the serpent and the scorpion is usually hidden in places where you can't see them so easily until they sting you. Amen? The serpent hides. The scorpion hides. And by the time you see them or feel their sting, it's too late. But God says if we are supposed to tread upon them, it means that we're supposed to see them before they sting us and step on them. That they never sting us or anyone else. Let's start stepping on the serpent of indiscipline. The serpent of dishonor, the serpent of fear, the serpent of pride, the serpent of greed, the serpent of slothfulness, the serpent of lust. Come on, let's start stamping on those serpents that our children and our children's children will have a better life than we experienced. Amen? If we can't do it for ourselves anymore because of where we are, let's do it for our children and our children's children. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Okay, let's see if we can get in a few lines um, or a little bit of revelation from the scripture that we have been in. Romans 6, Romans 6, Romans 6, Romans 6. So turn with me in your Bibles to Romans 6. Yesterday we were looking, hallelujah, we started at verse 12 where it says, Therefore do not let sin reign in your mortal body. Anything that we do that is not according to the word of God, it is sin. And anything that we do repeatedly, anything that we become disciplined at doing, becomes more and more sin. Our mortal body becomes taken over. That's why the word of God says we're born in sin and shaped in iniquity. So we're born into a sinful in environment. But the iniquity, the sin that takes over our mortal body is what we are shaped by daily. Amen? We're shaped by it daily. So when we say out of our mouths, um, I'm, I, I, God is processing me. God is processing me. God is still working on me. But we're not allowing God to work on us through righteousness, holiness, and truth. We're continuing in sin. We're being shaped and molded by sin. But we're saying out of our mouths, God is working on me. But our action, our mortal body, is demonstrating that sin is reigning in it. Then we are indisciplined. And that is why sin is reigning in our mortal body. And so we need to be disciplined. We need to resist the devil that he will flee from us. Don't just keep falling for this sinful act, whatever it may be. Gossiping, lying, stealing, sexual immorality. And just keep saying, oh, don't, don't judge me. Don't talk to me about it. God is working on me. No, he isn't. No, he isn't. Sin is working on you. Indiscipline is working through you. That's what's happening. But we have this, this, this excuse that we created to satanic doctrine. Oh, don't, 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 don't say anything. God is working on me. I'm all right. Don't judge me. The devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. We have to hold our brothers and sisters accountable so that sin doesn't reign in their mortal bodies or in ours. Amen? It's very important. And so, 
even the smallest of thing i said this a few a few days ago that even the smallest the the, the, the smidgen of sin if it is allowed especially some kinds of sin gossip rebellion come on anger pride if just a little tint of those kinds of things is in the heart of someone and we only pay attention to the good parts the things that they do well the way they they, they, they treat people and carry on even pastors pastor is such a nice man he goes out of his way for people he goes he travels far he takes people home he invites people into his house he gives them his, his, his food and he's always so loving and so there but if you cross him if you cross him if you say or do something that he doesn't like he gets angry and he pounds on you from the pulpit and in private like there is no tomorrow with no compassion no forgiveness no mercy but 99 percent of who pastor is is amazing and admired and so we overlook the little bit of anger that is in pastor because of how how much the 90 percent of him is wonderful or her is wonderful that's the wrong approach that's the wrong approach i'm not asking you to go um judge or or correct or rebuke your elder but I'm saying do not ignore that little thing don't ignore that thing because it can become a big thing it can become a big thing and so maybe the only thing you can do is pray if you have been the victim or you heard about someone who passed that has come down and very hard you have to be you have to be you have to pray pray because you love your pastor if you love all the other things that your pastor is and does pray for that little thing pray for that little rebellion in that church sister pray for that little frustration that little sexual immorality that little gossiping that little slothfulness that is there don't get caught away don't get drawn away by the majority that is good because it's only a matter of time when that little parasite takes over the entire heart and then you're going to be wondering when, when did this happen because we allow sin to reign in our mortal body sin of any kind however small if it reigns in our mortal body it then takes over and then we begin to obey its evil desires and that's when out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks amen hallelujah so that's where verse 12 in recap it says do not offer the parts of your body to sin that means any part of our bodies that we offer to sin I, I i i i say this all the time i used to struggle with lust because of the life that i used to live and when i came into christ i couldn't live that life physically but i was living that life in my head I was living that life in my head and so um, when it says do not offer your parts of your body the part of my body was my mind and so people saw my external actions and said wow he's transformed he's not he's no longer a womanizer no 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 that's not true that was not true I was still a womanizer in my mind I was still a womanizer in my mind and so we can trick people with our outside actions or our seeming outside change but we can't trick god because really who we are is in our minds not in our outside actions there were many girls uh, god forbid god forgive me that thought that my actions towards them meant that i was seeking a deep intimate relationship that would lead to marriage because of the things I did outside but in my mind I had one goal and one goal only and when that goal was accomplished I was gone so we cannot look at the external of any man not our bishop apostle pastor prophet not the external but the internal and when we see something coming from the internal our job is to grab on to that sin and not let it rain in our pastor or let it rain in us or our spouse we have to cauterize it cut it off quick perform surgery rando shepaka mako sotoroboko shen you spirit of anger i see you trying to come up in the man of god 
see you trying to come up in my husband. I see you trying to come up in my wife. But I cut you off with the sword of the spirit. I go into his liver. I go into his lungs. I go into her heart. I cut you out of her soul. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Your spirit of Jezebel. Your rebellious spirit. I cut you off in the name of Jesus. You will not raise up. You will not grow. You will not become anything in my spouse. In my children. In my pastor. In my church sister. I cut you out now like a spirit surgeon in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. So we have to be vigilant. We have to be. That's why God wants us to discern. We want to discern so we can tell people, oh, that person is wicked. That person is, 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 is under demonic oppression. That's most of the reasons we want to discern. But God wants us to discern the evil spirits that we can go to war as a surgeon and cut it out. Because sin must not reign in our mortal body. Sin is a cancer and it must be surgically removed by the spirit. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. And so this passage of scripture is so deep and so intimate and so revealing and so profound that if we begin to go deeper into these words, into this scripture, that's why God has had me. You notice how fast I move through all the other scriptures. Ephesians 2, 2 Corinthians 12, Hebrews 4, come on, John 1, 16 to 18. But here I am at Romans 6. Hallelujah. And I can't move. I should have moved on from a day ago or two days ago. It should have been a one day touch on this thing. But God is saying this is an issue that is in my church. This is an issue that is in my people. This cancer of sin. The cancer of sin and what sin produces is too rampant in too many of my people who think that they are solidly on the train going to heaven solidly on the train going to heaven i am here to tell you this morning with every respect and honor that i can muster up to not offend you that the train that carries any form of sin is going to be stopped at the gate and persons are going to be taken off and jesus is gonna say depart from me i never knew you i pray that it be none of us but we have to search ourselves. God only help those who will put themselves in a position to be helped. There are things in our lives. Notice it. How you talk to your husband. How you talk to your wife. I had to go there. I had to be there. My wife was under torment at a point in our relationship because of how I either reacted to her or didn't react. Either way was just as bad. Yeah, man. You think I got to this place and still growing because it was just miraculous that I was just born with... No, it took work. It took submission to God's word. It took realizing that sin must not reign in my mortal body because sin cannot enter the kingdom of, of heaven. Sin cannot go into heaven. It can exist in the kingdom of God in the earth because we hide it. Pastors are, are, are pedophiles, them raping, but them preaching like whoa. Pastors are having illicit relationships. Female pastors are abusing and confusing um, women and men in the church. And if they're still preaching like Paul and laying hands on the sick and they recover. It can exist in the kingdom of God in the earth because God's grace is not that any should perish. But it cannot go to heaven. Can I tell you the truth? Please don't be offended. Sin will not be allowed in heaven. It cannot go there. Can I speak in Patwa? It can't go there. For my American friends and family. In Jamaican parlance, sin can't go there. Let no dopey delude you. Don't be like the woman in the in the in the McDonald's with the with the McDonald's coffee. You cannot burn up yourself with sin and think you will go before Jesus and He will say, I reward you with heaven. Jesus will not reward us with heaven. Is not that kind of judge. Heaven is not what we earn. Heaven is by how much we learn. 
access to heaven is not what we earn. Access to heaven is by how much we learn. We have to learn that righteousness, holiness, and truth, doing things the right way, including repenting when we don't, is how we access heaven. We must identify the wickedness that is in us and not allow, us, allow it to reign in our mortal bodies. Because when it does, it will produce evil desires. And our evil desires, come on, hallelujah, I'm out of time. It says, do not offer the parts of your body to sin. That means when our evil desires become our way of living, that means we're offering up ourselves, our bodies to sin. As those who have been brought from death to life. Come on. So we were once dead and we were brought to life and we must preserve that life. That's our job. God will strengthen us to preserve it. But we have a responsibility to preserve it. We have to work with God. We have to co-labor with God to preserve this life that he has given us. So we must reject wrong thinking, reject anger, reject lust, reject pride, reject greed, reject gossip, reject all those evil things that we see in the Bible that God does not like. We have to reject them. And when we see them manifest in our lives, go cry to God. Not even to your church brother or sister. Not even to your pastor. Firstly, go cry to God. God, I see myself doing this. I hear myself talking to my wife and I know that you're not pleased with what I said to her. I hear myself disrespect my husband. And I said I'm sorry and I sincerely was, but I said it again two days later. I said it again three days later. That means sin is reigning in your mortal body. You don't need to apologize anymore. You need deliverance. Come on, people of God. Man of God, if you're constantly frustrating, annoying, and being in a battle with your wife, you need to back up and recognize that God holds us men responsible for the peace of our household. We are supposed to run our household, our family, and we're supposed to make sure that whatever is out of place is fixed and put in place. And so if there's constant butting of heads, constant arguments, don't go to God and pray about God, my wife rebellious, God, my wife not submitted, God, my wife not honoring me, God, God. And God is just there saying, go on talk now, because you're like the Pharisee in the middle of the temple saying God I'm not like my wife I'm not like my wife I pray every time I fast I do this and I do that then how come if you do all of that that represents my presence how come you and your wife is like this how come how come how come because if you are subtle in the spirit and your wife is cantankerous and butting head she will keep missing there will be no connection and explosion in the house so as my wife was growing and as, as, as I am growing, we have learned a strategy. If I fall in a moment of weakness and say something or do something that I shouldn't, my wife just take the Jesus approach. She just quiet. And I the same. And there is no butting of heads. And then we laugh at it later and say, look at that, Satan was trying to think, but we caught him. But we have to try. We have to make that effort. God's grace will only be sufficient for those who are willing to accept his grace and submit to his grace. Paul, when God said to him, my grace is sufficient, he stopped talking about the thorn. He left it. He said, all right, God, if you say your grace is sufficient, I won't focus on that anymore. I won't let it be a problem to me anymore. I will just go with the flow and let you put me on show that men may know that no matter what my situation or circumstance, I will give thanks in all, at all times. Our marriages will never work unless we stop looking at those who twerk and those who are just trying to work and let God do a mighty work in us that he might do a mighty work through us, first in our families, then in our communities, and then in our nation. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. I hope you were encouraged this morning. Hallelujah, praise God from whom all blessings flow. We give him and him alone all the praise, all the honor and all the glory. He is awesome in this place and he wants us to be our best. 
God wants us to flourish and to prosper, to increase and to be who he has called us to be. But we must first submit to his grace. Amen? Just look back on that encounter with Paul when he had that thorn. He said, three times I went to the Lord. Three times. God, I'm your servant. God, I'm your real big man in this time. When I go to places, people get healed, delivered, set free, and made whole, dead, raised up. All kinds of miraculous things happen. And this thing is, is thing there. No, God, get rid of it. Get rid of it, God. And God was saying, cease and settle. Do you trust me? Trust me. Prove that you trust me by allowing my grace to be sufficient. So the thorn didn't go away. The pain or the hurt or whatever it is didn't go away. But when he decided to trust God, he didn't feel it anymore. It didn't affect him anymore. You're, 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 you're angry all the time because your husband is not doing this or your wife is not doing this. Let God's grace be sufficient. Your child not doing this. Your son or your daughter not talking to you the way they're supposed to. Or them, do, them doing this and doing that. And Lord, I'm so upset. I'm so frustrated. My boss is not treating me good. My supervisor, uh, the people that I'm supervising, not doing, not doing what they want to. Allow God's grace to be sufficient. Do your best and then let God's grace do the rest. And you'll find that success you can access. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You can tell I'm excited because I decided that I stopped five minutes ago and I'm still going. Praise God. Hallelujah. But since the spirit is subject to the prophet, I'm going to cut off now and begin again tomorrow. But we're still on Romans 6 and it's just so hard to leave it because it's so powerful and so required in this now season. Amen. Hallelujah. We have to capture this thing called sin that is strategically coming like crumbs from a cookie or a bread and contaminating the whole loaf of our lives we must find it identify it and cauterize it cut it out so that we might live amen hallelujah father we thank you for this morning thank you for your blessing thank you for today thank you for your gift and grace and mercy upon us in us and through us Holy One of Israel, we bless your name, we praise your name, we honor your name, and we give you praise and thanks for all that you have done and all that we will see even today in the name of Jesus Christ. Sanctify and consecrate these emblems even now. May they be to our bodies health and strength, prosperity and good success in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. And so as the Lord Jesus Christ took the bread, he blessed it and broke it. He gave it to the disciples and he said, Eat, this is my body broken for you. As often as you eat of it, you do it in remembrance of me. Eat ye all of it in faith. In Jesus' name. Mm. Hallelujah. And likewise, he took the cup, he blessed it and took a sup and he said, drink, this is my blood, the blood of the new covenant. As often as you drink of it, you do it in remembrance of me. Drink ye all of it in faith, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Hallelujah. I prophesy that this is a good day for you, that this is a day of blessing, a day of favor, a day of self-control, a day of power, a day of love, a day of grace and peace demonstrated to you and through you. May the heavens open favor with God and man upon you today in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Raise your hands for the blessing and now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you his peace in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Go forth, family, and have an amazing day. God's way for our God has already shaken everything that is evil out of your day, his way in Jesus' name. Remember, Jesus love you and we love the whole I want to tell. God bless you. God bless you. Remember, focus on discipline because discipline hallelujah produces success discipline produces righteousness holiness and truth 
discipline produces honor, humility, and the fear of the Lord. Let us ask God to download into us his discipline as how he went away often to pray. No matter what was happening, he always was disciplined to spend time with his father. I need that discipline. Do you? And if you do, ask God for it. He will give it liberally as he gives wisdom. Praise God. Love you guys. On behalf of Pastor Marsha Wade, I'm Rowan Wade saying have a super day. I prophesy that you will do good things for someone today or people today. That you will encourage someone, bless someone, feed someone, close someone, do something for someone. I prophesy that you shall be a blessing to someone today and someone will have a testimony because of you today. In Jesus' name, amen. Love you guys. Have a good one. Hallelujah. You are good.